Hey. Uh, thanks for coming. Sorry for the delay. So we're going to talk about 10 rules to write better UI tests with Selenium. So I'm Mathilde Lemay. I've been working before on company as a consultant to help company to improve their Selenium test and the test in general. Um, the, 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 the challenge with Selenium is really not to write tests. I mean that you've got several APIs uh, in Python, in Java, and so on. Um, the problem with Selenium is how can I have robust tests? How can I maintain them uh, with no high costs? And stuff like that. So writing Selenium tests is really not difficult. Writing Selenium tests and maintain them it's where the challenge is. The first, uh, and I think that's the most important rules I've got, is the page object pattern. How many of you know these patterns? Great. Uh, I, I think I asked the same question maybe two years before, and there was only 10 or 15 hands, so that's, I think that's good. So what's the page object pattern? Uh, in fact, um, you mean like when you when you interact with your Gmail account or stuff like that, uh, you've got services offered by the mail. The way they do it, you don't care. In fact, the page object pattern is just the same. I mean that you will have a page that, that will give you features, that will give you uh, services. Uh, and how they do it? In your test, you don't care. So all the HTML stuff like um, that my ID is username on my input will not be in the test. It will be always in the page. Okay, so you will have a page with all the channels. So for example, here I've got, uh, it's a login page. So I will have uh, a service that will uh, offers me the, the features to login. Uh, you will also have a lot of different methods like get errors or stuff like that. Uh, but here you've got only the HTML and how do I really interact with the HTML. HTML. And there you've got the tests and on the tests uh, you have so you have no HTML. So uh, I don't know, but if someone come uh, now, um, he just look at these methods and he will just know what I mean when I wrote this, I mean that so just typical bad English, uh, but uh, I think that it's really, it's really nice because when you've got a test fail, um, when you try to understand why it fails, um, the most simple the test is, the less time you will, you will spend there. So that's uh, stuff that everybody should know and everybody should apply, especially in that kind of test. The third rules is kind of the same, but it's concerning the data. I mean that all your test data, uh, you separate them from your test logics. Again, it's just a basic separation of concern uh, pattern, but it's kind of kind of really useful because you're going to have a lot, a lot of data, and if you have them in every test, everywhere, and stuff like that, if you got something like a, a changement in the way you're dealing with user or address or stuff like that, so a really impacting change, uh, you will have to maintain all your tests. If you put them on a separate uh, object, on separate objects, uh, it will be really better to maintain them uh, when they are evaluating. Yeah, the third rules. Um, this one is maybe a little extreme. Um, it's one test, one assert. Um, it's, it's extreme, but it's really a way to go. Um, in a lot of tests, you see that the guy that wrote the test have a lot of things in mind. And in fact, he tests maybe a test like that. I go to page A, I do that test, I go to page B, I go to the test, and stuff like that. And all of that in the same methods. That's not good. Because when you've got a failure, you don't know why. You don't know why the test was built uh, and, and that. So what we have to do in unit testing, in integration testing, and in uh, Selenium testing too, it's really to have only one thing in mind when you wrote a test, and that's really important. And in integration and unit tests, most of the time you don't have the problem, but when you see Selenium tests, uh, most of the time they're really long tests, and the guy 
want to avoid losing time because selenium tests have the problem that if you work with a real brother, it takes time. It takes maybe three or four seconds to set up the brother. So sometimes people think that they will gain time if they do a lot of stuff in the same methods. But that's not really true because you will lose a lot of time when you will try to maintain it. The first, yeah, um, I, I see sometimes some really clean test code base, something normal with good variable name and stuff like that. And when you look at the tests uh, made by the same dev and stuff, then it's not as clean. So it's really important because, in fact, when you've got a lot of tests, you spend a lot of tests, a lot of time, sorry, maintaining them. So you really have to to be careful about the variable, the variables, um, the name of the variables, and the name of the methods, uh, and so on. My five rules is to think parallel. Um, I just. When you start, you have not a lot of tests, so it doesn't, it doesn't take a lot of time. But when you add more and more tests, uh, you will end up to a, to a situation where you need to, to improve the, the speed of your builds. So don't think about parallelization after, because it's harder. So if you just try to do some things, some tests really clean, uh, that can be run in parallel, it's always better. And the, to, to, to have a test in parallel, you will have to build atomic tests. I don't see often that in unit or integration tests, but on selenium tests, I don't know why, um, a lot of tests I've seen um, have some dependency between them. For example, you've got one test that will create a user, Another that will update the same user, another one that will delete, delete it, and another one that will check, I don't know, on the, on the list that the user is not there. That's not good, okay? Because you will have, in Selenium, you can have a lot of failure. So if you don't do atomic tests, you will have more failures, and that's really not good. So people always sometimes respond that, yeah, but I have to do that because it's a UI and stuff like that. Okay, we are dev, so we can hack the database directly. Uh, we can hack stuff directly. So don't always try to go through the UI. It's, it's really not a bad practice, and the, code, the test code you will write, if you stay limited by the UI, will always be bad. Um, we're not, I mean that we're not QA or stuff like that. We can, we can develop. It's, it's our job. So don't stay limited by the UI. Hack it, find there is a lot, yes, there is, sorry, there is plenty of frameworks that can help you, so really you, you don't have to be limited. Eight, I think it's easy one. Who don't use uh, Jenkins or stuff like that at work? Yeah, everybody, so up. <laughs> the nine is to think incremental. When you start a new project with Selenium, it's good, okay? But most of the time, when you came to a legacy project, when you've got not, no tests, no unit, no integration, no UI Selenium test, nothing. One best practice is to start with a UI test because most of the time you, you lose a little knowledge about the project, so you, you will start to do Selenium test. But that uh, can be really dangerous because what you have to, because Selenium tests are breakable, are not really stable, are hard to maintain, they cost a lot to maintain too. So the deal here is really to stay small. You do maybe 10 or 15 or 20 tests, you wait, you wait maybe two, three, four days, five days, just to be sure that you don't have builds problems, you don't have some tests that are unstable and stuff like that. And if it's good, you can go bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And at the end, you will have the, all the projects that are covered. Um, my last rules uh, is just a story of trust. I don't know why. Okay, I think we... Nobody likes delete, deleting code, okay? But deleting tests, you, don't have, you do not remove quality of the project when you delete a test, okay? Sometimes you see, and you see there is three or four tests that test exactly the same thing, and you have to clean also your tests. Uh, it's, not, it's not a shame to delete the test. Um, and 
In Selenium, because you're dealing with external web services and external staff, sometimes um, we see bells that are going red and green and red and green. N not a lot, but stuff like that happens. If your test uh, is make the build failed, you've got two possibilities. You fix it now, you delete it. But look at your code, at your code base, and see how many comment tests you've got. Because sometimes when the, the test is unstable, just the guy comment it, so build going red, green again, um, and nobody will will handle the real problem. So just if if it go red, you fix it. You don't have the time. You delete it, really. And you will see that the minute you will delete it, you will create another test. Maybe it will be a unit test to cover the same same topics. Maybe it will be an integration test, but you will do it. Uh, if you comment it, most of the time uh, that's not good because in fact it will stay comment in comment for a long time. So yeah, time is up. So if you get question or stuff like of comments or concern or stuff like that, I will be around uh, until tomorrow. Thanks. <laughs>